What's up guys and welcome to box opening number two of Dominaria, this time sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Guys, you've heard us talk about Grand Slam a lot in the past and honestly we cannot thank them enough for all that they do for us. Uh, we've been working with them since the previous owner and now with the new ownership. They have held true to everything that they could have done and more. They're renovating the store right now. They're actually almost done. It looks fantastic. If you didn't see, I did post something on Instagram about this store, so you can actually look there and see just how things are shaping up. It looks fantastic, guys. So I hope that you will go check them out. Their link is in the description below. You can check out their Facebook group. Give them a follow. If you're in the South Carolina area, I highly, highly recommend you going to check them out. Again, super nice, guys. So... With that, we are going to get straight into this uh, box opening. I'm really super stoked about this set still. Um, I know you guys probably heard in the last box opening video, this is really the first standard set in a while that I've been really excited about. Um, and truth be told, that excitement has not gone down at all. Uh, it's fantastic. Dampening Sphere. First rare vile offering. Um, so yeah, this set is super, super good. Uh, I do want to talk about this little box opening video I wanted to talk about MTG Arena a little bit um, their Dominaria is dropped on MTG Arena so if you have a beta key you can actually go play it on there right now there's a lot of other changes Ooh, there we go Hinterland Harbor uh, and a foil soul salvage um, oops there we go uh, so they're adding a lot of new stuff to MTG Arena which obviously we knew is coming that's in beta that's the whole idea but uh, there's a lot of actually really cool stuff happening. So, first of all, Dominaria, obviously being on MTG Arena is fantastic. Ooh, good card. Um, hey, there we go. Uh, Multani is our first mythic. Uh, obviously, that's exciting though. Um, MTG Arena having Dominaria in it is going to make a lot of the gameplay a lot more fun. I've noticed from playing on there for a few weeks now that uh, the decks are pretty much, like, you know what to expect most of the time. Still an Awakening and a Foil Swamp. Um, you know what to expect most of the time. So for instance, uh, if you see blue-white, generally speaking, you're going to be up, uh, up against the Embalm kind of token strategy, which is actually my favorite deck to run. Uh, if you see uh, green-black, generally you're going to be against the Explore deck. Um, Pirates, obviously. Ooh, Steel Leaf Champion. Uh, Pirates, obviously, is red, black, on, and so on and so on. Um, lots of cool decks, but obviously there's, it's limited. It's a very limited card pool, and so we're not actually seeing that much diversity. Uh, obviously, adding Dominaria is going to help that a lot, so I could not be more excited. Squee, yes. <laughs> Love Squee. Um, couldn't be more excited about that. I think it's going to be really, really fun to play with those cards and see how they affect the meta on there. Um, hopefully for the better. Additionally, uh, MTG Arena, you can actually spend money on now, uh, which some will consider good and bad. Uh, Rite of Bells and Lock is our rare. Ooh, there we go, Yargle. Um, some will consider good, some may consider that bad. Uh, I think it's fine um, to have both systems. You can still earn gold, so that's not really a huge problem. Um, so I, I'm fine with that. I may or may not put a little bit of money into it. If I do, I'd like to start streaming Oath of Teferi. And a foil cloud reader sphinx. Um, I'd like to start streaming or at least recording some gameplay for you guys. Um, if that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know. I really like playing MTG Arena. It's just generally it's kind of my chill time to just sit down and play some magic and not actually have to worry about anything. Um, Territorial Allosaurus. Um, it's generally just my time to chill a little bit, so I don't tend to record or stream or anything like that with it. Now that we're releasing a lot more videos per week, it's kind of nice to have some time with magic that is not related to the channel. And so uh, that's sort of been my time for that. But I do, uh, Daring Archaeologist, by the way, I do want to make sure that it's content that you guys enjoy. And so if you do, then obviously, you know, I'll sit down and record some for you. So. That might be a short-term goal in the future, uh, if you guys are interested. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, ooh, there we go. Phyrexian Scriptures. I think this is the first saga of Spoiled, actually. Uh, it's our second mythic. Um, but yeah, so it, it is very fun. I'm excited to see it with Dominaria. But uh, also, they released Quick Drafting. I don't know if you can actually Quick Draft yet. I haven't gotten a chance to try. 
Um, but essentially the idea is that you draft against bots. Uh, we have a two-headed giant. You draft against bots, and from what the, uh, the review said, it's basically more like, you know, skewed towards the player a little bit, like you're going to be getting mostly better picks, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's beta, so it's test. Um, but I am kind of interested to see how that actually plays out. And again, I haven't tested it yet, but it should be a lot of fun. Poor Bear's Blade. Um, so I'm excited about that. I think it's cool that they're introducing draft, and they, they have said in the future they do plan to do uh, similar to MTGO where they have league drafts where you draft against people and then you can actually go in and play against basically anybody who has drafted. Uh, Clifftop Retreat. Oh, and a foil rare, uh, the Druidic Val. This card is like, it looks kind of interesting, but isn't, if that makes sense. Um, initially, I think Kenji said uh, streaming one time, he was like, oh, it looks good. It's like a Genesis wave, but it's really not. So unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so excited to try that drafting experience. Hopefully it'll be a fun one. Uh, we have the Immolating Inferno. Ooh, I love this card too. Um, so yeah, that should be pretty fun. Uh, they're, they did some, like, quality updates just in terms of, like, little animations and things like that that make it a lot more immersive in terms of, uh, just making it look better. I'm pretty happy about that as well. Uh, Ferrari Conjecture. Um, I actually have some background in design and web development, so gaming and stuff like that I look at from the uh, design perspective. And so, speaking from that side of things, I actually think some of the changes they made look really, really good. So I'm excited about that. Um, Benalish Marshall. Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing that, by the way. Um, so yeah, I think it should be a good product overall. Um, it it's it's turning into something that I actually really enjoy. This pack feels like it's got a lot of cards in it. Um, let's see. Ooh, a Sulfur Vault. Weird. For some reason, that pack felt very, very thick in comparison to the others. Um, so yeah, MTG Arena looks like it's going to be a much better product than Duels, which is sort of, in my mind, the comparison. Uh, that and, I guess, Hearthstone. Um, Ooh, there we go, Isolated Chapel. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I've been playing it a good bit. Usually once a day I'll sit down for a little while and play it. Uh, but, yeah, I would definitely, if you can get your hands on a beta key, I would definitely suggest trying to. Um, it's worth a shot. It's, it's a lot of fun to play. Ooh, there we go. Muldrotha is fantastic. And a second foil rare, the Self-Replicator. Not an amazing card, but pretty sweet. Um, let me put this here. Don't want to forget the mythics. Um, so yeah, I, I'm pretty stoked about Arena. Hopefully you guys are. If you are uh, on there, let me know because uh, I'd be interested to know your take on it and just what you think. Uh, I think it's really fun. So uh, the Nurture, pretty sweet. Uh, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention about Arena. Um, and I can't remember what it is, if I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, it's a good product. Go play it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, with, um, Dominaria out now, ooh, Gideon's Reproach, and a, uh, Traxos, this card is sweet, by the way, uh, with Dominaria, Dominaria out now for a little bit longer, and hopefully you guys can start getting your hands on it, if you didn't pre-order it, you can now go out and buy it, um, I want to know what you guys think about it, so far, it's super sweet, um, cards, ooh, there we go, a, the, Precognition field, I believe. Um, th it's it's really really fun to play. It's super high powered. Um, I talked a little bit last video, the last box opening video, about how uh, Will and I kind of sat down and we did our normal sealed thing where we got a box of it, we broke it open, uh, each taking half. Ooh, the voice is super good. Um, we each took half of the box and built a sealed deck out of it, and we actually got to sit down and play and. Because we used half a box and not just the normal six packs, we kind of got to flesh out the strategies a little bit more, just to see in like a best case scenario what we could make happen. Um, another Antiquities War, I believe. Ooh, Foil, Shauna. Um, and it was actually really, really sweet. Uh, Historic is actually a mechanic that works really well, in my opinion. Um, it's not always something that you'll get there on. I know we did, obviously, because we were getting half a box of cards versus just six packs. 
um, or even draft where you only get a few. Uh, but it worked really, really well. Dreadshade is sweet. Ooh, and a foil uh, Skizik. It's an interesting card. Good in draft. Um, so it it worked really well for me. I actually built a white blue historic deck. Uh, so everything was kind of focused around being a legendary permanent of some kind, and um, I was able to get out some really, really powerful stuff. There we go. This is actually the card I was kind of hoping to get. Mox Amber. Uh, definitely not as good as initially uh, thought, but it's still a very cool card. Uh, pretty much an auto include, I think, in Commander and probably Brawl, I would say. It's just so sweet. Zero cost artifact ramp is amazing. Um, so yeah, it it was really, really fun. The decks were really solid. Uh, Will built a Trixie blue deck, the Bombardment. Um, so he basically had a bunch of the merfolk tricksters, uh, a bunch of like return permanent to hand kind of things, and then a bunch of draw spells. Uh, he also had some counter magic, he had a few syncopates, which made it tough to stick some really big threats, but uh, we got there eventually. <laughs> Ooh, uh, Archmage Eternal. This card is really, really good in Brawl. Uh, if you haven't watched, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the command zone, this pack is already open. Um. Hmm. That's questionable. Um, <laughs> yeah, if if you haven't watched the Command Zone uh, Game Nights episode, you really need to go watch it. They got to do Brawl, and it was really, really sweet. Uh, the Lightning and Evra. Not a very good card, although in draft, fantastic. <coughs> um, so yeah, I actually sat down and watched that Command Zone episode, and the game swung so often in random people's favor. I think Jimmy like took out a very, very early lead and just was demolishing for a long time. Um, and then a few other people kind of took over. Ooh, the Black Blade is fantastic in draft also. Um, uh, there was at one point Cassius is a back on there, which if you don't know who Cassius is, he is a football player slash magic player, and that is awesome. Um, he played very, very well. He unfortunately stalled for a long time, but uh, was able to pull out some really good plays later in the game. And then uh, Torgar, by the way. And then Josh was able to take over for a while. Uh, the other player was... I wish I could remember his name, but he's from the sister podcast with the Command Zone. <coughs> and um, he played really, really well also. He played a Giora deck, which I thought was really sweet. Uh, because that would probably be the deck that I'd want to play. Uh, the Mending of Dominaria, by the way. Um... It was just really, really sweet. He got so much value out of that, and it just it made for an awesome experience. I will not spoil who won, but I definitely suggest going to check it out. A uh, lot, a lot of fun to watch those. Game Nights is really, really cool. That's sort of our goal is to create content similar to that. Um, the Lich's Mastery, by the way. Obviously, we are not uh, Josh Lee Kwai and Jimmy. Um, we're just not quite up there yet. Uh, we are a long way away, but... That's definitely a long-term goal of ours, is to be able to create content like that that hopefully you guys really, really enjoy. Um, the Glorious Rebirth. And now we are down to the last pack, guys. This has been a decent box. Voldrotha and Mox Amber both seem great. No Planeswalkers, which is a little disheartening. No Karn. But we did get a Karn on the last box, so I'm not too unhappy about that. Uh, let's see. Last Dampening Sphere is good. And the Gin of the Lamp. A good card in draft. Unfortunately, not high value. So, guys, thank you so much for sticking around and watching the second booster box opening of Dominaria. I do hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to go follow Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Again, they are sponsoring this video. They have done so much for us. The least we can do is show them some love, too. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully, we'll open another box very soon, and you guys can enjoy that as well. Until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.